spanner, there is someone behind you. What? You, who are you? I'm Spanner from the RIM Harbinger. We better get to our camp. Now, crap a wolf, mod on. Okay, guess I'll pick this one. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Oh, there's a horsey. On down. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I think I got it. I think I'm getting a hang of this. This way. So, Lucy, what do you make out of all this? Until we know who they are, and what their intentions are, let's keep my existence a secret, so don't tell them you are an engineer. And since all my communication with you is internal, they cannot hear me talk to you, however, it does not work the other way around so you will have to pick your moments to talk back to me. We better keep going. I am detecting multiple human life signs up ahead, as well as a large variety of animals in all kind of shapes and sizes. Be careful Spanner, we still have no clue what their intentions are and why they crashed. For all we know it was intentional. Look what the cat dragged in. It's wolves that dragged me in, but Captain, close enough. Stay behind me. We don't know what this is. Let's see if we can get <sighs> some answers. <sighs> oh, I needed that. Let's close this up. Uh, oh, food. Oh, I could eat a T Rex by now. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for the uh, clothing. It's a lot nicer to actually wear something. Thought you'd be more comfortable. Yes. And who are you? Yeah, introductions. We haven't gone around to that, have we? No, we haven't. I'm Spanner. I serve on the RAM Harbinger. It's a science ship. And who might you be? I am Captain Nelson of the RAM cargo ship Zarkov. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. What brings you to our neck of woods? I'm gonna sit down for this one, because that's a bit of a story. Eddie's. So, it must be about 45 hours ago now. 48, I don't even know how much. It's been a while. My ship just, uh, got a stress signal, or some sort of short, powerful burst signal, and looked into it called up headquarters, asked them what to do, and they told me to get out here, that there was a ship that crashed there about two years ago, the Zarkov. Presumably your ship, I would say. Um, investigated the signal, came down to the planet, planet fall, thrusters barely operational, I just barely set my ship down on the surface. Made a trip across the desert, found what looked to be a crash site, investigated some more, found the remains of some cargo storage container or something. Um, looked a bit further, found a hole in the ground, found a weird ass ring, some computers hooked up to it, a generator. By that time, I was under fire by some sort of unidentified drone. Never. A drone? Yes, it never identified itself, it just started shooting at me. So I punched the computer, um, it seemed like it did something with the ring. It activated, and I jumped through it, Hail Mary, nothing to lose, and ended up in another part of the desert. Followed your, I would presume you guys' flags, uh, made it to a, I'm guessing, halfway station that you stopped at. Some sort of house with some wood around it. Yes, makeshift we were shelter. there for probably about a month. Okay. Um... Read the journal that was there. And a journal? Yeah. On paper. Somebody wrote out a journal about 25, 28 days or something worth of text. Interesting. Go on. Um, 
I'm not gonna tell you it wasn't it wasn't that much, but it did give me a bit of an idea of what the hell happened to you guys. Um, in very short, it said that you guys crashed, ship was quite damaged, uh, distress call was not answered, found an alien portal after a uh, cave-in underneath the ship, went through it, disassembled the ship, putting it into the portal to destroy it, finding the next portal, and uh, your engineer was hurt. That was about the stretch of it. That's fairly accurate, yes. So, I followed the flags and it also told me where to find you guys, um, what to follow, which direction. Did that, found the oasis, um, had some water there because oh, I was really out of it by then. And I found a grave. Presumably yes. the engineer that was hurt. Yes, Roger. A jolly Roger, a good friend a good co-pilot, and a good engineer. Kind of figured it had to be uh, him. He was injured when a part of a building collapsed during an earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever seen a man drown in the desert? I can't say that I have. It wasn't pleasant. I can imagine. So... I got to higher ground after that, um, after resting up for a brief moment, and noticed a weird spiky rock formation. Uh, it was the closest thing to me, so I figured I would check that out. Got to a portal, which opened up as I got there, went through, and well, the rest is pretty much history. Found myself out here and got picked up by your animal wrangler there. That's Flyboy. He's my pilot. And a damn good one, too. Yeah, I can imagine. If you managed to land that thing in somewhat one piece through this atmosphere, then yeah, I would say so. Uh, that entire flight mission was cursed. What We're happens? lucky to be alive. Well, I told you my story. I guess it's time for yours. Well, let's see. Where should we start? Uh, we were... Picking up a cargo at the L tier 6 station. We also picked up a scientist and a security officer to transport with the cargo. Security? Something to do with SFF. I didn't ask. I don't know. He was guiding the scientist. Mm -hmm. And we weren't too many weeks out from the station when things started going really strange. The first accident was an airlock that killed the security officer. Oof, that can't be pleasant. No. And after that, we continued our journey. I made that call. I probably should have turned back, but I made the call. And that ship was acting more like a brat child with more malfunctions than you can possibly imagine in the strangest manners. And like a bucking bronco, it went down in that gravity field. And we're lucky to be alive. Yeah, I can imagine. I had trouble just getting my shuttle to land on that planet. So, I can't even imagine what it's like to get a cargo vessel that's probably not even rated for atmospheres to land that thing there. Oof. That must have been rough. It was quite the ride. After that, well, I guess that journal told you the story. There was a quake. It opened a cave beneath the ship, and we found that alien structure. And Roger, our engineer, was somehow able to get it powered up and going. And we took it as a chance. There was no water. There was no functions left on the ship. So we took the portal, and it brought us to the desert on the other side, and we were lucky to find a well that at least had enough water in it for a little bit. It would be dry by midday. We stayed there for about a month, and after Roger was injured, we decided we needed to keep going. He had pinpointed what he hoped was the location of another portal, and he made it as far as the oasis before collapsed lungs, took his life. Hmm. Sounds like one hell of a trip. 
And now we're here. That we are. The exact same place we started. Well, not quite. We start off in a desert. Do you study the stars at all? No. I fly amongst them from time to time, but one star looks the same as the other star to me. It's a hobby of mine. Like the old sailors of the past, I study the stars for hmm. navigation. We're on the same planet. We're in the same, pretty much the same position we started. What? They're not in the right spot, though. The stars? What do you mean the stars are not in the right spot? Well, they're in the right spots if it was like 200,000 years ago. What are you saying? I'm saying those rings, portals, whatever they are, they've taken us through time. Through time? Pretty much through time to pretty much the same spot we left, but through time. And safety here is relative. This is a very dangerous world. Yeah, I've seen some of the creatures that roam around. It's a primal world. And so the creatures are similar, time. but not the same. And it rains here a lot. Well, Get I used mean, to it. It's a nice change from a desert, I have to say. Time? I believe so. Uh, that does explain a couple of things, but... Wow. Yeah, it's gonna take some time to process. Would you like some dinner? I believe the fish are ready. Yeah, I guess. We can talk again. There'll be time. We have all the time in the world. Huh. A time joke. Just what I need at this point. Thanks for that. Thanks. Welcome to your new home. Well, thank you for dinner. That really hit the spot. Um, I'm gonna wait a little bit with uh, going to bed. I need to think about some of this stuff. Stay within the walls, please. I uh, will. Trust me, I've seen what's out there. <laughs> uh, good night. Good night. Oh, man. What have I gotten myself into? <sighs> Why did I have to respond to that signal? I'm stuck here in the past. With these people that have seem to have made a life for themselves. I would have to guess they're pretty content staying here. And what else is there to do? There's no way off this place. Well, out of here. From here. Not even sure what to call it. Even if we can get a signal out, there's nobody out there for the next 200,000 years to receive it. What are we gonna do? Any idea, Lucy? I think your assessment of the crew's current state of mind is fairly accurate. I concur with the conclusion that the captain made, I have compared the star layout with the one recorded earlier today, and the stars are indeed out of alignment. Which could point to a shift in time from our perspective. I think we should take a closer look at the portal, and figure out if we can get it to work to take us back, um, forward, you know what I mean. Spanner? Yes, Lucy? You still have to fix the jump drive that was on fire on the Harbinger. Remind me in about 200,000 years, okay? Thanks. <laughs>